And welcome back, or welcome in, if it's your first time. Welcome to Ultimate Soccer. It's the pregame. Gillingham FC taking on Wrexham AFC from Priestfield Stadium. It's going to be proving to be a bit of a tough game for both teams. I tell you what, we've got lots to get through. But remember, if you're first time here, get to the end of the show. And I tell you, at the end of the show, we're going to be opening this box. This box will be opened at the end of the show. There's something in there. As CPL fans, stick around because it's CPL. It's CPL. It's Canadian Premier League stuff. It's been sent in to Ultimate Soccer and uh, RJ Harrison. Thank you very much. Big, 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 big Canadian soccer fan. Going to tell you about him pretty soon. But let's get into the pregame. What we got on this one, again, as per usual, is we've got news, opinion, stats, predictions, game talk. Stick around for that. Opening up a box. And we've also got highlights to kick it all off. But before we get into the highlights, the last game for Wrexham on the road, MK Dons finished 1-1. I predicted MK Dons should have won that 2-1, and you know me, I did, because all the people that watched it saw the prediction. Problem was, it finished 1 apiece, not 2-1. However, i got to say, Arthur fakes it. Arthur fakes it, yeah. Take a look at this picture. But what I'm saying is... There's two pictures side by side. One shows the image as is, and one shows me that I've circled the ball. So you can see where the ball actually is and all the confusement of that picture. No, the linesman didn't catch it. No, the referee didn't catch it either. But tell me down below, tell me down below, do you think this was a goal or do you think it's not a goal? Come on, down below. Have some fun. We've got more stuff to get through. But was it a goal or was it not a goal? Did Arthur fake it really well when he picked up the ball and said, no, 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 no. It's not a goal, ref. It's not a goal, ref. No. Yeah, let's have a look at that picture. Was it a goal? Tell me down below. I want to know from you, Ultimate Soccer family, was that a goal or was it not a goal? Have a look at that. So, did you think it was a goal? Did you think it was not a goal? Down below. Now's your time. A little bit of fun between you and me. Come on. Get your scripto down below and uh, be a poet. Be a poet. Come on. Tell me, do you think it was a goal? Do you think it's not a goal? I mean, you've got to have something to say. It's got to have something to register with that picture. And if you watch the game, I'm sure you're glad to get to see that picture, right? But uh, just saying, was it a goal? Was it not a goal? Now, moving along. Let's take a look at the highlights because the highlights came up. Oh, that was November 11th, 2023, Remembrance Day at the race course ground. Gillingham taking on Wrexham, Gillingham the guests. And Wrexham, well, I'll tell you what, have a look at the highlights. You'll see what the score is. I'll see you in about maybe 25 seconds. Yes, so 2-0 was the score, and uh, lovely finish there by Ben Toza right at the end, yeah? And uh, well well, well done by Ollie Palmer, you know, the old 1-2 in, in close quarters. He waits and then releases a quick shot, keepers down low, dead and buried, bang, 1-0, and then obviously Ben Toza, the winner. Gillingham don't give much up recently, and I'll tell you what, we're going to talk about Gillingham pretty soon, but uh, club news, we're talking club news right now, Wrexham. Luke Young, 31 years old, turned 31 yesterday. So, and uh, he's been with the club since 2018, became the club captain in 2021. And recently, the Tuesday game, last Tuesday, when Wrexham were on the road away at MK Dons, well, Luke made his 250th appearance. Now, let's face it, Phil Parkinson would have known about that. And that's why it happened, yeah? I mean, you get a guy close to that, it's going to happen, especially... When you can play at the level of Luke, yeah, Luke can, yeah? And on that note, Mr. 250 Games for Wrexham, I tell you this, listen to some of the awards that Luke's got. Even if you're a Gillingham fan, you're going to register that this guy is a top player. So check this out. It's really, really interesting. I've, I've got this ready for you. Luke Young, Wrexham, trophies, National League winner 2022-2023. Last season, we all know about that. Great win. And uh, bang, Luke Hoisted the trophy. Now, FA Trophy runner up 21 22. Now, that's trophies. Talking about individual, this won't take long. Stick with me because you'll be impressed. Plymouth Argyle player, yeah? 
He was the Young Player of the Year in 2011-12. Then he went to Torquay United a couple of years later. Player of the Year at Torquay United, 2014-15, 2016-17, 2017-18. Then he went to Wrexham, like I told you, in 2018. And at Wrexham, Player of the Year in 2019-20, 2020-21. He has had... Six occasions with three clubs where he has been the player of the year for that club. That is bloody amazing. Now, moving on with some more news for Wrexham. Next game for Wrexham away from home, because there's three games back-to-back, -back, remember, yeah? Sutton United, MK, and now Forest United, or Forest Green Rovers in the next one. But for now, it's obviously Gillingham. It's... Um, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting game. I've got to tell you that it's really going to be interesting. But I'll tell you what: before we move along, let's get into the stats file. You're going to love this, Gillingham's fan. I'll tell you what: you will love this because it'll tell you stuff about your own club that you probably don't know. And Wrexham fans, you're used to this, so it's about a minute long. All I say is remember to press pause because these images will fly by. So press pause on the image. Have a butcher's have a butcher's hook, rhyming slang. Have a look. And uh, feast your eyes on the stats. There's some good stuff in there. I'll be back in about a minute, not three minutes. Sorry for the three minutes from the last show. I do try to keep it short. Bang it up. In you go. Check the stats out. I'll be back in a minute. So welcome to the stats. We've got a big stats spread right there. Remember, press pause as we go through so you can look a little longer, but we've got to keep moving. We've got to get back on screen as soon as possible. There's your starting lineups. Look at the last 10. I want you to look left. I want you to look at Gillingham. Eight out of 10 haven't been scored on in the first half. Keep looking at that. That tells you a lot of what's going on. Wrexham, it's all the way through the game, but look at them. Eight games out of 10 not scored on in the first half. More stats coming. Keep it going. Looking now at the schedule after this. Next up is a game against Forest Green on the road. Looking at the table, Wrexham sitting in third. Gillingham sitting eighth. Let's look at the top scorers from both these teams. Tells a story, hey? Really tells a story. Let's get back on screen right now. So I hope you enjoyed the stats. I do my best and I try to vary it and not bring the same each week. And you know that, Wrexham fans. I do not bring the same files each week. It's always different, but the stats always tell a story. Don't forget, we've got to open this box at the end of the show, so stick around especially if you're a CPL fan, Canadian Premier League fans. And in the week, Calgary, Cavalry FC, got shawacked by an MLS team 3-0 at home. So we won't talk about that one too much. Now, talking about the game, first about Gillingham, and then we'll talk some Wrexham, okay? Got some notes for you. Gillingham have not conceded a first-half goal in eight of the last ten games. Eight out of ten. Things happen in the second half. I remember back in November, saying the same thing. That things happen late in a game with Gillingham. The first half, they're tighter than the Ducks, you know what. But the second half, they really, really just, I don't know, lose concentration, lose energy, don't have the fitness. It's hard to put your finger on it, but when you make a coaching change, that sometimes helps it along. Haven't scored in the last two games, either Gillingham fans, you know that, but Wrexham fans probably don't. Haven't scored in actually 191 minutes. The longer it goes, the more that becomes some kind of psychological burden because your forwards need goals to stay happy and to stay confident. And if there's no goals flowing, and I tell you, you're going to see how lacking the goals are going to in the back of the net for Gillingham when we get into this next part of the show. But even in the stats reel, you'll have seen that they don't score many goals, yeah? So, but they don't give up too many. That's the other positive thing. Moving along, the last home league win for Gillingham was December 29th, and that was a 1-0 over Sutton United. It was a pretty tough game. wasn't easy, but they ground out the win. Now, since November 1st, Stephen Clements has been the coach. Back up a little bit of backdrop from Stephen Clements. Stephen Clements is the son of the great original... Liverpool goalkeeper Ray Clements, also an England international, but Ray Clements started at Scunthorpe, went to Liverpool, finished at Tottenham, and also Stephen Clements played at Tottenham for quite some time. But Stephen Clements is the coach at Gillingham. Now, I'll say this about it before we go in. I feel he steadied the ship. Jill's fans tell me if I'm wrong, but I think he steadied the ship. You see, the start of the season for Gillingham was like, it started quite decent. 
then this mid phase, say like about a 15, 16 game phase in the middle of the season. Too many red zones, man. Too many losses. Like loss of form, loss of confidence. Goals are not getting scored. Goals are being leaked in, and, and it just looks like the team's in a mess. In comes Stevie Clements, November 1st, 2023. Since then, like I say, he's steadied the ship. I'm going to give you his record. It's pretty decent. Now, 21 games he's been in charge since November 1st to the present day. 21 games, eight wins, five draws, eight losses. 38% win ratio. And in the last 10 games, they picked up 16 points, as have Wrexham. So you can see that they've got some talent and some rhythm and some form about them now, what they didn't have in the mid phase of the season. If they had had a decent middle of the season, I tell you what, they could be right up in the top end of things, but they're not. Stevie Clements, maybe the playoffs is where you're going to fight for a promotion spot. Don't rule them out. Do not rule them out. And in this game, you'll see my prediction coming up. But I tell you, if they get busy from now to the end of the season, they could be a spark team that goes through the playoffs. It could happen. But anyway, Stevie Clements' numbers, you've heard them. Now, Wrexham, on the other hand, haven't scored in three of the last six games. Haven't scored in three of the last six games. Unbeaten in three, mind. That's Sutton on the road 2-1, MK Dons and Notts County. MK Dons on the road as well, Notts County at the racecourse ground 1-0. They're unbeaten in two on the road as well. And you've got to say, Phil Parker's the coach, has used the players very well this season. His squad rotation and player rotation when it's needed, give or take the injuries, give or take suspensions. Obviously, Will Boyle, you'll hear about him soon. But I think Phil Parkins has, has rotated his, his squad exceptionally well to keep their energy levels up and to keep the team happy. I mean, this team plays with confidence, relies on having the ball and relies on flowing, like, like I say, back in the day when we were in the National League fighting for it. They play the ball around like Real Madrid. Sweeping it around, just looking so bloody good, yeah? And on days this season, we've seen it. When Wrexham are on their game, they're very hard to stop, especially with the wing play. I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's Mendy, doesn't matter whether it's McLean, doesn't matter if it's Ryan Barnett, doesn't matter if it's Mary or Bolton or anybody else. Wrexham has great wing play, and that is something that Gillingham might want to... Might want to take in for real. A couple of little pointers. Paul Mullin without a goal in seven. Arthur Okonkwo, four clean sheets in ten. William o, William Boyle is unavailable due to his second yellow card at MK Dons in the week. I had a gut feeling in that game that Willie was getting sent off. And I don't know why Phil didn't take him out because I thought, this is the kind of game where you could just see Will Ball getting sent off. I'm not being a smart ass. I'm just saying what I was feeling, what my gut told me. And as a coach on the sideline, I cannot say anything about Phil. Not at all. But it was just what I was feeling. But anyway, Phil Parkinson, this is for everybody. These are really massive stats. And he's been with a few clubs. I'll tell you what, Phil is a massive coach. Listen to some of this. Colchester United started out there, 42%. Hull City, 20% wasn't there long, though. Only 24 games, and it didn't go well. Charlton Athletic, 114 games, 38%. Bradford City did well at Bradford City, 36%. 274 games, mind you. So he's there quite some time, yeah? Bolton Wanderers, another happy place. 157 games, 31%. Sunderland. Did you remember that he was at Sunderland? Because he was. 39% at Sunderland. Wrexham AFC. Voice this in. 62.25%. Those are the numbers that Alex Ferguson, Jose Mourinho, you know, Klopp, Arsene Wenger, and, uh, you know, Guardiola, the likes of. That's the numbers those guys are living. Probably a little bit higher with Guardiola, but I mean, I'm just saying, yeah. Great point about Phil, though, is on 955 games coached. So I would say close to the end of next season, He'll be hitting game 1,000. So there you go. There's some no news on Phil, but I tell you what, he's a great coach. And like I say, he really has, what I would say, used the squad to its fullest effect and given players rest and really nurtured this thing along. You know, if he hadn't have done so, I don't think Wrexham sits third. I think they probably sit six or seven. Honestly, you got to say Phil Parkinson has been an absolute gem as a coach all the way through. If you don't like him, I wouldn't know why. Listen up. 
Next up is going to be the Forest Green Rovers game. That's coming Tuesday, Feb 27th. That's a night game, 7.45 kickoff. So wherever you are in the world, it's a night game. And I love the night games. You know why? I like playing in the dark. I'm not scared of the dark. Are you scared of the dark? Because I'm not. I like playing in the dark. I love playing in the dark as a kid. Yeah, Tuesday. That's after this game. And uh, remember, please like, subscribe, hit the notifications. And if you were here for the first time, did you enjoy it? And if you didn't, tell me why. Just tell me why. Everybody's got a right to say what they will. The, the comments are not blocked. You can say exactly what you like, you know. Anyway, just saying, just saying. So let's get ready for another big nail biter. You wouldn't want it any other day. You wouldn't want it any other way. And I'm thinking with this game here, you have to think that maybe something's brewing with Gillingham. You don't score many goals. Don't give many up. You've seen the stats. You've seen and heard what I've said glowingly about both teams because I'm right down the middle on this. Yes, I lean towards Wrexham, obviously, but I really think we're in for another tight game. And every game towards the end of the season is going to be a nail-biter. And I just want to leave Wrexham fans with one thing. Do you know who the last game of the season is in League Two? Do you? I do. I'm going to tell you. It's Stockport County. Can you imagine if by the end of the season, Wrexham is fortunate enough to keep this good flow going, that they eventually end up going head-to-head -head with maybe Stockport on the final day of the season, possibly for promotion places, possibly for the title. And don't forget about Mansfield Town because they're, a, they're definitely going to be in there too. But last game of the season, Stockport County. But as for this game, Gillingham, Priestfield Stadium, get ready for it. Both sets of fans. I hope you get into this. I hope we have a great crowd and I hope we have a great game. I don't see any reason why we shouldn't because for me, I do see goals don't see many. On that note, it'll probably be 5-4. But I'm saying my score was 2-1. You saw what I'm saying. Enjoy the game. Get into it. Drop a like, drop a subscribe, comment, and tell me what you're thinking. Especially on Arthur's faking it. Cheers. So, the parcel. We're going to open it right now. And this is for CPL fans. So, Keep looking. Okay, we popped it really good. We popped it really good. We're popping it. Boom, here we go. What have we got? So I'll tell you what, doesn't that look pretty so far? But I'm going to do slow time. Established in 2016. That looks glorious. Absolutely glorious. Yes. And have a look at this. 2024 CONCACAF Champions Cup. That's to in process right now. The Champions Cup is in process right now. That looks absolutely freaking amazing. Let's have a look at the other side. I'm well pumped. Well pumped. Have a look at that. Have a look at that. Forge FC, Hamilton, Forge FC, CPL, Canadian Premier League. And here, have a look at the badge, 2016. Have a look at that. Glorious. I tell you what, I'm well made up. Well made up. RJ Harrison, Forge FC. Cheers, my brother. That is awesome. Massive. 